I'm a dancer, in case you didn't know that, but not the kind you might expect me to be. I'm not in a dance company. I'm not in a Broadway show. I'm not a backup dancer for Lady Gaga. I'm not on Dancing with the Stars. And no, I'm not a pole dancer either. But still, I am a dancer. And it really feels crazy to say that out loud on this stage to you today, because over 10 years ago when I quit ballet, I thought that I was giving up on my dream completely. Today, I want to share with you the story of how I got back into dance and reinvented my dream. If you don't consider yourself a dancer, no problem at all. Just look through the lens of whatever your own experience is. And I hope that there's at least some nugget of inspiration that can help you on your path. So let's start from the beginning. So the young me always danced. I would choreograph to Janet Jackson and Mariah Carey with my best friend Kristen. I would perform at any possible moment for my family. It was just who I was. And as I got older, I started to get more serious. By the time I was a teenager, I was on track to become a professional ballerina. Every day after high school, I would commute from New Jersey to New York City via bus and take my ballet classes. I would spend my summers in intensive training programs, and I got to be so thin and I was so active that my menstrual cycle stopped. I also every night would stretch my feet. I would put them in this weird contraption to try and make the arches bend more. And despite how painful and traumatic this might sound, ballet was my stability. It was how I structured my time it was how I made my parents proud. It was how I felt some sort of control over my body. This was me trying to get it perfect, as I often did. And one of the biggest critiques I would get from teachers back then was that I was too technical and not expressive enough. Well, this really pissed me off because it was the one thing that I couldn't learn by practicing, you know? Expressiveness takes a release. A release needed to happen and I didn't know how to control it. It was beyond control. So fast forward many arabesques later, and I'm faced with a crossroads. Do I continue on this ballerina path and try and get into a dance company, or do I quit and go to regular college and study something else? I started to feel too selfish for going down this ballerina path. I asked myself, who am I actually helping? How is this serving anyone? I also had my mother's practical mindset saying, how are you going to make a stable income being a dancer? Does anyone else have that uh, with their moms or dads or anyone? Um, so you know, taking everything into consideration, I said, you know what? I'm going to quit. I'm going to go to regular college. And I started studying psychology and women's studies trying to unlock the questions and the struggles I had with my own body through my mind. It helped, but I still felt stuck. So a little while later, I get introduced to the world of holistic health. I met an amazing teacher and mentor who helped me learn new things about my body, how to eat differently, how to just relate to my body in a totally different way. This was a huge turning point for me because I not only was able to heal a lot of the issues happening in my own system, but I got started on a whole new career path. I went back to school and got certified as a holistic health coach. So a few years into that, pretty cool, right? Here I am, I'm, I'm being a health coach and I'm seeing clients and I'm finally helping people in a direct and meaningful way, which is what I wanted. At that time, I was also living in the city and going through interesting love drama. The dating stories I have could be the whole subject of another talk, but I won't tell you that now. Um, and you know, I wasn't dancing much, but on the surface, all was well, right? I was doing what I wanted to do. But at my core, I was agitated and unsatisfied and pretty much unhappy. What was missing? Well, I searched for answers in many outside places. I went to tarot card readers and astrologers and the psychics on the street. Have you ever been to one of those? And I had one of them actually tell me that my chakras were totally broken, and I paid her $40 to help me fix them. <laughs> no joke. So as much as I studied and I ate a ton of kale and I tried to align my chakras, 
there was a part of me that just wasn't being expressed. I needed to dance. But I also didn't want to go back into it in the rigid way that I had come from. It was too intimidating to just go back into a ballet class, and I didn't really want to. So I started dancing more at home. And one night, I decided to record myself. I thought, what would happen if I posted this to YouTube? So I did, and I kept it totally anonymous at first, because the thought of sharing it with anyone I knew was horrifying. But I felt the need to just share it somehow. So here's a clip from one of the very first dance videos that I made. It was called Living Alone Doesn't Have to Be So Lonely. And I made many of those videos in my apartment, and I started to experiment in more public places. One day, I was jogging through the park. I had my iPod, and it starts downpouring. And what happens when it rains in the park? Everyone clears out, right? Well, I stayed, and here I am with this big open field. So I take my iPod, and with the cord of the headphones, I tie it to a fence. I put on the camera, I hit record, and I do this. So I remember leaving the park that day and being soaked to the bone, but skipping down the street with excitement. I had danced. It was awesome. And that was the first video that I shared publicly. It was also the first time that I think I had tapped into that expressiveness that I was desperately searching to find as a young ballerina. So making these videos became the thing that I did, one dance at a time whenever I could find the opportunity. It made me happy. And it was just a part of me, you know? You know when like, you know it's something that you need to do no matter what? And I was finally dancing again, and it was in my own way. So here I go, I'm making these dance videos. And what happens sometimes when you get happy, right, is that doubt creeps in. And I started to say, this is kind of silly, and it's kind of selfish. That thing started to come up again. Like, I don't know, why am I posting myself to YouTube? Who really cares? But a couple of really important events happened in my life that reminded me of why I needed to continue. One was the death of my great aunt, Mary Ann. She was a painter, and she led a very full and adventurous life in all of her 90 years. She was the first real live artist that I ever met, and it was so inspiring to me. We had been writing letters back and forth since I was a teenager. And it was her artistic encouragement back then that kept me going for as long as I did. One of the things that she always reminded me of in these letters was the idea of self-preservation. When her two marriages failed, when she lost her home multiple times, when her heart was broken open into a million pieces from all the love drama she was having, she always had her art. As she said, it was the wall that held me up. And although she only started painting and drawing when she was about 29 years old, she continued until the very end of her life. Here's some of her work. And as I looked through her paintings and I read and I reread these letters, I started to realize that making the dance videos was my version of self-preservation. I needed to dance. And I felt the need to carry on this legacy that my aunt had somehow passed along. So without knowing it, my aunt, she taught me what art can be, a way to take the mess that life gives you, make it your own, and then put it back in a different way. And this theory would prove to be very helpful when another important life event happened to me. So my dad, who was 55, and relatively healthy at the time, had a major stroke. And it paralyzed his entire left side and caused a lot of brain damage as well. This was really unexpected. Um, it was about three years ago. And it changed the reality of my family's life very drastically. And it's still changing it to this day. Here, dancing became my saving grace. As we would spend days on end in hospitals and nursing homes, as I spent 
what felt like literally half my time commuting from my life in Brooklyn to my life in New Jersey, I would escape. I would find the empty hospital lobby or the basement in my parents' house just to dance it out, even for five minutes. It was the only thing that could provide a small relief to all the sadness and the chaos that was happening around me. Now, an old me would have felt too guilty for dancing when my father had lost his ability to walk. But something really clicked for me in these moments, seeing how much my parents were struggling and feeling the sense of stability totally ripped from under me. Again, I needed to dance, to make sense of things, to preserve my sense of self, and to survive. It turned out to not all be in vain. Once my father was able to do a little bit more, he became part of the action. One night he was stationed at one of the nursing homes and um, we were having a really rough week. Imagine a 55-year-old man in a nursing home having to live there for a long period of time. And so I said, well, let's just go for a walk. We went downstairs, I wheeled him down, and uh, we're in the cafeteria after hours. So I give him my iPod camera and we do this. You turn your on, please. Take one. And go, girl. became a filmmaker. And our artistic partnership in that process brings me to another realization. Self-expression is not selfish. I kept making these videos and I kept sharing them. And every time I would go to hit publish, a part of me would cringe in fear of coming off as too selfish. But the responses that I got from people proved me wrong. Friends and strangers would email me and say thank you for the reminder that they too could create something or dance in the midst of whatever was happening in their own life. One of my best friends made a video with her father when he was nearing the end of his life. When another one of my aunts passed away, my uncle started following my blog and he confided in me his desire to sing. So last Thanksgiving, we turned the dinner party into a little performance. Um, and Another amazing and surprising result of all of this is that my career has totally shifted as well. I found a way to be of service and to express myself creatively. My coaching work went from being more nutrition-based to now focusing on creativity as an essential part of health. It was a gradual shift that happened along with my journey back into dance. I started leading creativity workshops, and writing a blog, and soon I was seeing clients one-on-one, -on -one, helping them to get through whatever was going on in their own life using their creativity as a path. Twice a year now, I host a showcase, which is an opportunity for my clients to perform or present, sometimes for the first time, something creative that they made. And I'm also dancing and teaching dance again, which is amazing actually teaching dance for the first time. Um, sometimes workshops, sometimes classes. It often includes the uh, theme song to Flash Dance, one of my favorites. And um, it's pretty awesome. 
I'm also getting opportunities pretty consistently to perform and to share my own dancing in various ways. So while I may not be in a dance company, I often find that dance keeps me company. And I'm not in a Broadway show, but I have literally danced on Broadway. <laughs> Twice. <laughs> I'm not a backup dancer for Lady Gaga, but I have danced in the aisles at her concert. <laughs> I'm not on Dancing with the Stars, but I do dance with the moon. and I still don't dance on poles, at least not usually. <laughs> and I know that my own happiness is not dependent on any outside source. It's accessible to me when I'm expressing myself and when I'm dancing. I don't need the approval of someone else. I don't need someone's permission. I don't need the perfect feet or the perfect body or anything else to just dance. Just by being born human, I have the ability to create and to express myself. And I think it's my duty to do this and to share it with the world in my own unique way. My health and happiness is dependent on it. And I've seen it influence the health and happiness of people around me. So although my story is far from over, if I were to leave you with one final thought, it would be this. You can uncover your own self-expression and watch it transform you and the world around you. And if you're ever faced with a crossroads, remember that there's a dance inside of you too. Thank you.